Hi, I'd like to welcome you to week two of the St. Aidan's Institute course on the New Testament. This week we're going to really start diving into the, the specifics of the readings. And the first question that always comes up in, in parish Bible studies is why there are four Gospels instead of one. Um, actually, uh, an equally valid question would be why are there only four? Uh, there were quite a few more written in the early life of the church, and it wasn't until the Council of Nicaea that it was decided that there would only be four. However, with the four, there are still some pretty significant questions to ask. And an important part of understanding the Gospels is understanding to whom each one was written. Each one had a different audience and was addressing different issues. Uh, for example, Matthew was written to a Jewish audience. And so as you read through Matthew, you will constantly see references to the Old Testament and Matthew pointing out that what Jesus did was to fulfill a specific Old Testament prophecy. And um, for a Jewish audience, that will be significant because he's trying to show them that Jesus is indeed the fulfillment of the scriptures and indeed the Jewish Messiah. The Gospel of John, on the other hand, was written to a Greek audience, um, to people that are considering following the Christian path who have no background in Judaism. And so references to the Jewish scriptures would have no meaning to most of these people. And so Jesus, uh, so John writes in a much more uh, philosophical and, and intellectual style that would resonate more with a culture that's that's um, steeped in the Greek philosophical approaches to um, intellectual pursuits. And so in John 1, you get this long, beautiful explanation of how Jesus is the Word, the Logos. And that, to a Greek audience, is going to make a lot of sense, whereas to a Jewish audience, they're not really going to care very much. And so part of the issue is you're, you're looking at different letters written to different audiences, <clears throat> But you're also looking at um, some of the variances and emphasis in each of the Gospels. So our second question this week is for you to take one of the Gospels and really kind of map out how it flows, how it works. Um, because if you understand how the pieces fit together, then you can then be able to do the exercise for other Gospels. The first question this week is an exercise in harmonizing the readings. And a great example of where it can be challenging to harmonize um, is the arrest and crucifixion of Jesus. Different details are recorded in each of the Gospels. And so what I want you to do is read through the four accounts of the arrest and crucifixion and, and look at what details you find in each Gospel. Because typically when you hear the story, what you're hearing is an amalgamation of the four Gospels, not just um, how it occurred according to one writer. And this exercise will help you see... Um, how different details get emphasized, but when they all come together, they produce a single and complete whole. Um, so that's really the focus for this week. Um, if you're feeling a little more ambitious, I, I would recommend beyond the reading that you also look at um, the, the dictionary entrance on the canon of the New Testament. It's very instructive. And if you're on the ordination track, it's even more important that you get a feeling for the whole canonization process, uh, because you will be asked about it in your parishes. And you're going to need to have a ready answer. So that's our focus for the second week. Uh, I hope you enjoy the readings and find um, the time in the classroom as edifying as I am. Uh, we're off to a really great start. So thank you. God bless you. And I'll see you in the classroom.